Good morning and welcome back to the homestead. Today we're going to attempt to pick some mulberries. So we have right at the entrance to our woods back here a huge mulberry tree and apparently the original owners would just lay tarps all around it to catch some mulberries. Well, I mean, it's too high to really pick any of the mulberries off. Maybe there's one or maybe two branches that are low enough to get on a tall ladder to reach. But other than that, they're pretty high up there. So I did some research and I also found that you can also do this thing where you tie a string to a tennis ball. I just made a hole, a hole go right through it. Tied some baling twine on it. I'm gonna attempt to throw this over some of the branches and then hold it and shake branches of all the mulberries so then all the mulberries will fall down onto the tarps underneath and we can gather the mulberries so last night I did go ahead and put two small tarps out under one of the areas of the tree to see if we could catch any of the mulberries that have been just falling on the ground I don't know how successful it's going to be if we got a lot or just maybe a couple but I figure we'll go out there and see what we got and then also try to shake some mulberries off maybe even try to pick a few see which see which technique works best and is more effective and go from there. So it looks like we actually got quite a few mulberries last night on the tarps. So I'm going to take these, I'm gonna put them in my strainer so we can bring them in and rinse them off when we're all done collecting the, as many mulberries as we can. that's pretty effective for our first mulberry harvest. 
I put this out like around 6.30 last night. It's about maybe seven o'clock right now. So it's just over 12 hours. And this is filled to about right there. I'm pretty happy with that. Those were ones that had just been wasted and in the mud last night anyway. So I'm, I'm excited. So now we're gonna try to actually use the ball to shake this branch. Show you. This, we're gonna use the ball to shake this branch right here in hopes of dropping some mulberries. Now my hands are already completely covered in mulberry juice, but it will be worth it in the end. Okay, let's see how it goes. Step one works. Now we're gonna take both ends of the string. We're gonna shake this branch. To get them to fall off. might be all we're getting from this branch. So we're gonna collect these ones up and then move to a different branch. Okay, so we gathered about a handful um, from that method. Definitely more effective to let them fall overnight as they ripen, but if we want to make something today, this also works. So we're going to put these with our other ones, and then we're going to move our tarps to some other branches and try those branches. Hi there, Mabel.
Well, we're gonna try that angle and see if it works. The crank is quite a bit higher, so we'll see. Baseball. <laughs> that time I got caught on string. One eternity later. Yes, got it. Now it's caught up in the tree. I'm going to bring this tarp over here. This is pretty large. Trying to cover anywhere that might fall. Okay. 
Okay, I don't think we're going to get that one. Definitely not over far enough to get it on the tarp. So I think we actually going to get a ladder so I can get the ones off these lower hanging branches that are inside the goat pen. Now the thing I forgot before setting up my ladder is that this part of the goat enclosure is where the blackberry bushes are, all the brambles, and they have lots of thorns. So hopefully next year this will all be cleared out and it'll be much easier to get the blackberries and we can just lay tarps all over this area as well. But for now, if we don't pick them, they just go to waste. They just fall to the ground and they go to step on. So it looks like most of these lower hanging, although it looks like most of these lower hanging branches have already dropped their blackberries. I'm not seeing a lot. There's some over there that I can get. I'm not sure it's worth the effort of going through all the thorns. I think I'm just going to leave them. Looks like we have a little friend that came for a little treat. We are sharing our mulberries with these little turtles. His face is all purple from eating mulberries. I don't know if you can see, but his little nose is all purple.
Okay, so from what I determined, it's definitely easiest just to lay the tarp down, obviously, and let the berries fall. We got the most because we have, let me show you that canopy. That big tree, those big trees. The mulberry is just as big as those. Not just a little shorter. So we're getting berries from all heights falling onto the tarp. Instead of me just doing one branch where I got, you know, maybe two handfuls from each branch, which was so awesome. But for the amount of work, I think it's easier just to wait and then fall off of the tarp. But I'd say we got a pretty good yield. See, it goes up to about right here on my strainer. I'll go measure and see how many cups of mulberries we actually got today. So yesterday we wound up gathering about five cups of mulberries, but it looks like we're gonna need about eight cups to make a cobbler. So we're hoping that we'll get a few more cups today when we go to check the tarps. But before I can check the tarps, I need to go ahead and take care of all the animals. So we have moved our two turkeys and our two chicken poults, our two little chicks, outside. They are big enough to be outside, but since they're not big, as big as some of the other animals, they get picked on out here. So we have them separated um, in a little cage over there. been just over a week and you can see that the goats are doing a fabulous job of clearing this area for us. Mostly all sticks. There's still some grass and stuff that needs to be eaten down, but this is what it looked like last week. This is what it looked like last week. And now, it's almost clear. Let's go get the mulberries. Okay, looks like we got a few on this tarp.
Tyler, right, because we got quite a few over here. Right there. Oh, okay. oh, that's a oh, whoa, it shoots you up here. I think we should do a dinner for a mulberry toddler. Oh, dude, those are squished mulberries. Huh? So squished mulberries. Yep. Why? Well, because they've been falling for a little while now. Yeah. Uh, Ran them over with the truck. Oh, um, 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 what can I get since the guy up in the forest? No. Alright, we got quite a few off those tarps. So I think we might have enough for our cobbler now. Berries. We'll take them in and rinse them off. Get the sticks and leaves off. Hello, secret camera. And see if we have enough for a cobbler. Okay, we have officially collected eight cups of our mulberries. We're just, we've are just we been rinsing them off and trying to get most of the sticks out, but we're just gonna pour them out again on this towel and make sure there's no sticks. We are leaving the stems on because they're so tiny that when you try to pull them off the ripe mulberries, you just squish the mulberries and the stem still doesn't come out. But what everything I've read is everyone says that when you cook them, you don't even know that the stems are there. You don't taste them or anything, so. We're gonna make sure that there's no sticks. We wanna take all the sticks and leaves out and then put the mulberries back into the bowl. What are those ones? That's a stem, that's fine. I'm just gonna look at the mulberry. I think it's probably one of the bigger ones. No sticks. What I want you to see, look at, here's a stick. Okay. So what I want you to do is as you look through them, pick them up and put them in the jar. And make a pile of any sticks you find. Got it, I probably won't find a lot of those. Sticks and leaves. Sticks and leaves, sticks and leaves. Every morning at them, just hear thud, 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 as the mulberries hit the ground. Okay, I think we got all the leaves and stems out. So we pour the rest of these back in. Like I said, we, when we rinse them, we also search for all the leaves and scent and try to get them out. So there's only a couple more that we missed. All right. Now we're gonna mix our ingredients. We have one cup of sugar. We have four tablespoons of flour. We're using the Bob's one to one gluten-free flour since I have a gluten intolerance. And, and we're gonna use, juice. yes, one tablespoon of lemon juice. And this is for eight cups of mulberries. Oops. Yeah. Now we're going to stir it all up. That's cool. Yep. 
Pounds of snow. Is that banana? That's a, just a bunch of sugar. Yeah. It, 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 it just looks like the berries fell down in the snow. That's it, right? Now we're also gonna be sharing some with some neighbors today. So we have a couple little pans for neighbors and then another big pan. Can you bring all those over? Now the blackberries when there are the mulberries, when they are baked, they're gonna probably gonna break down quite a bit. So we wanna make sure we have plenty of berries in each pan. So Mo, do you wanna go ahead and scoop them into the pan? Ooh, brownie. Careful, don't wanna fling them. Yeah, don't want to do that. Pour into this bigger baking pan. <clears throat> scrape it out for me. Scrape, 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 scrape. Get all the sugar too. Sugar. filling and now we're going to set up for the topping. I'm feeling hungry already. Okay now for the topping we're actually going to use the recipe I used for my peach cobbler because the topping is just really delicious. So we have one cup of flour, a quarter cup white sugar, oh we forgot to get our quarter cup of brown sugar. Whenever you do brown sugar you want to really pack it in. We're gonna do a quarter cup of brown sugar. All right, we're gonna add one teaspoon of salt. I'm sorry, half a teaspoon of salt. And one teaspoon of baking powder. Once your flour mixture is basically a little loose crumbles with the butter, 
then it's ready to add a quarter cup of boiling water. So we're gonna add that in. Now typically when you make this recipe, you want to make it in about a 9 by 9 inch baking dish. But the only foil pan we had was a little bit larger, so there's not quite as many berries as we'd like. So we're going to wait to put the topping on this one and I'm going to add another recipe of berries from tonight's harvest and then we'll put this one in the oven tomorrow. But for tonight, we'll finish up these two little ones to show you what it looks like in the end. So we're just going to use our fingers, take a little bit of dough, you smash it out nice and flat to spread it, and then we just want to kind of lay it over the cobbler in chunks. So the end will look like that, and then these are ready for the oven. Spread them out a little bit. Oh, I almost forgot. We also want to coat this with a little bit of the sugar, cinnamon sugar mixture. Now the ratio for the cinnamon sugar mixture is usually about three tablespoons of sugar to one teaspoon of cinnamon. We're just kind of eyeballing it right now because we only need a little bit for these little cobblers. And you're just going to kind of sprinkle it over the top. And then these are going to go in the oven at 425 for about 30 minutes. And we'll just keep an eye on them since they are smaller, see when they're ready. And we'll show you what it looks like when it's all done. Hi, Daddy. Okay. Okay, here they are all done. They're so cute. Now we can just add a little lid on them. They're a perfect little single serve cobbler for a neighbor or friend. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share.